Okay. Yeah, fine. Okay. Uh, thank you, Raja. Thank you, Tane. Actually, I am the Stepney here when the tire is not there, so I'm just being put in. Okay. <laughs> so, and uh, I'm sure all of you youngsters make better presentations than I do. But this is just a simple attempt to try you and give you certain tips on how to make an impressive presentation. So I'm guessing that you've had to sit through some awful presentations during the course of various conferences you've attended. I'm sure you've sat through one of my awful presentations. So this is just, the first tip is always have original content. Your content is going to form the backbone of your presentation. There are three things to remember when presenting or giving a talk. One, know whom your stuff, know whom you're going to stuff, and then stuff them elegantly. That is to say, you have to have a target audience. And I especially say these to a lot of youngsters. When you're giving a talk, it is assumed that everyone sitting in the hall are orthopedic surgeons. So cut the crap of definitions and etiologies and this, this, cut all the crap. What have you done and how you have done it differently is what you're supposed to present. Don't waste time. Always create strong headlines. People decide to come, when they're attending conferences, there are multiple halls, they look at the topic that is going to be presented. So a topic that arouses the interest is tend to get you in, okay? and. So if I have to make a presentation on what is the appropriate time to fist fractures in a tra polytrauma patient. Now, you can, the same lecture can be given a twist, timing is everything. And leave ambiguity. So then the person thinks it's what is going to be different. Always, always remember that even when you have a great content, over a period of three, four slides, it becomes a little monotonous. So you have to enlighten the people with certain quotes, maybe orthopedic related, maybe interesting ones. So like quotes break the monotony. I was giving a talk on the evolution of AO principles and I gave this talk and I, I specifically remember that hall that everyone had that smile on their face when I quoted Graham Apley when he had said, callous is like sex. It's natural, it joins two, it joins two things together and it requires a bit of movement. It was basically AO principles. But you break the monotony and you change the, the methodology of going about your presentation. What is SEO friendly? In our times, 15 years back, we used to listen to talks and then go back at literature and check, cross-check what the author has presented. But nowadays, your generation sits with a smartphone in hand and they try and cross-check what you're saying with the data available on internet. So this is what is termed as search engine optimization. So basically, you are not only competing with your previous presenter, you're also competing with Google. So you have to make sure that your presentation is crisper than Google. You can beat Google. You provide more information than Google can provide in the same amount of time. Always, always follow the KISS principle. Different, different attitude here. Keep it short and simple. People are not impressed with impressive, high octane data and all. They're impressed with those simple points that they did not know and you were able to put across to them. So the three keys to successful presentations are the impact factor of your presentation. Is it simple? Is it clear? And is it visible? And they, can they remember it when they go back? Now the key question is, how many slides are appropriate for your presentation? Well, the answer is very, very simple. Only as many are as required to convey your message. Because remember that people make opinions very fast, especially in multi-hall scientific meets. Within three or four slides, they decide whether they're gonna sit through the whole presentation or go out for a cup of coffee. So three or four slides should be a bang impact factor. Always try and make it actionable, which catches the fancy of the audience. Actions usually, I mean, we grew up with our school teachers telling us actions speak louder than words. 
didn't follow that then, but I follow it now. Actions speak louder than words. So this is a particular slide that I took from one of my presentations on periprosthetic fractures, where I try and give data about the different incidences of different fractures. If I go about reading such a slide, it's monotonous, it's boring. I can comment, I give the whole amount of data without having had to actually mention the different percentages of different type of periprosthetic fractures just by an actionable graph which conveys which is more and which is less. It is not important whether if it is 44% or 34% as long as which is more and which is less. Always use visuals to reinforce what you're saying. Visuals make difference between sleepy audiences and attentive ones. The Chinese scholar had once said, I hear and I forget. I see and I remember. I do and I understand. And then the Howards a Medical School did a study on this. And they said that the retention power of an audience after a medical meet is about 10% if the presentation was only verbal and it is about 34% if the presentation was accompanied with visuals. Always, always have short and straight to the point content. And once you feel that you have a two point content, then point to the content. Tell your audience exactly what you want to point at. That is to say, have only one idea coming per visual per slide. Clear headlines, clear text. As presenters, we want to focus our audience attention to exactly the point we want them to focus on. But when speakers fill almost every inch of the slides with words, bullets, graphics, they do not give the audience a sense of priority. You want to point your audience to exactly what you want them to see. Get your audience to see what you want them to see. Don't fill every inch of your slides. White space or empty space is an integral part of a good presentation. Uncluttered. So what are your goals of your PPT? And this is very, very important. Transfer information. Everyone wants to do that. Provide knowledge. Everyone wants to do that. But I feel the third point is the, more important, the most important one. They can get that information and knowledge anyway. Why should they come to your hall and waste their time? Because they want you to inspire them with what you're saying. Now, don't ever read from the slides, especially. Because slides are intended to help the audience remember your information. They are not intended for you to remember your own information. And the very reason why do you say that? If an audience can read your slides and understand the whole text, then you are not required. You might as well just print out that PPT and distribute it into the hall and not waste their time. So a good presentation is one. If an audience sees it, he doesn't under understand what it is. He needs you to convey it. Always have, follow the thumb rule, which is not too much text, not too many things popping off. Always, always try and figure out the size of the hall that you're in. Never have your text less than size 28, because size 28 after six rows is not very clear. Always use fonts which are clearly visible, and content of the slide should be comprehended within 20 seconds, not long, longer than that. Remember, if someone can read, and like I, I mentioned earlier, always, always leave questions. An audience appreciates the speakers that can stimulate their mind, arouse their curiosity, and make them think at a deeper level. In a presentation, some details should be revealed, and some should be concealed. A good presenter knows exactly the points he wants his audience to figure out, and the points he wants them to ask him. If you can develop it one point at a time, you can primarily engage in mental intercourse with your audience. Winston Churchill had once said, a good speech is like a woman's skirt. Forgive my apologies to the ladies. A good speech should be like a woman's skirt, long enough to cover the subject and short enough to create interest. Always, always provide accurate information. Remember, in God we trust, all others must prove data. 
never underestimate the intelligence of an audience. Tell a lie once and all the truths in your presentation become questionable. Never indulge in altering of data, plagiarism, which is very common nowadays, speak as uh, sneaky publication practices, refrain from them. Engaging the audience, that is the most important part. Now the three E's of a successful presentation would be educate, explain, but most importantly, entertain. Use color, contrast, slides. If they're dark, then white. If they're white, then dark. Something to appeal to the color sense. Keep slides of radiographs especially light because dense or darker slides depress your x-rays and your CTs and MRIs. As an example, these are x-rays projected on a darker background. Now the same x-rays, nothing changes, just the color of the background changes and the x-rays become more prominent. Animate. Do not start reading long details. Get a moving algorithm to explain what you're saying and they set the speed of the movement of the algorithm with what you're going to say. The audience then follows that steps with you. Always, always keep your presentations updated. You never have to quote international literature, but make sure your slides mention international literature. That is to say that the audience realizes that you are comparing your literature with internationally acceptable data. Don't keep saying, as per this study and as per this study. Let the audience make up its own mind and compare. Tip number 12 and the final most important one, social networking. Remember, everything that you say and show in your presentation impacts your personal brand. You and I, we are all brand entities. Remember, how do you want to be known after you've left the hall? The success of your presentation is, if you leave the hall, Somebody in the hall audience asks his adjacent person, who was that? So the take home message is going to be, every presentation should be a statement of intent. Remember, you will be identified by the quality of your presentations. I read this on the Davos Congress Centrum wall and it made a lot of sense to me. So I, this is a poor attempt at a selfie. And it said, I was never such an expert on a subject as when I embarked on the project. And the more I learned, the realized, the less I know. Remember, beauty alone is not impressive. You have, an, you have to put an attitude to be attractive and a brain to be sophisticated. If you can do all of these three put together, you can actually have the scientific world rotating in your palms. Most importantly, especially for the youngsters, it is an opportunity to leap, which is learn, engage, activate, and progress. Over the years, I've had the privilege to serve on multiple committees and boards. But frankly speaking, I have been the one who had the greatest benefit from all of them. So this is an APOA's attempt to make sure that tomorrow, the day after, and the day after, Dr. Ram Prabhu and myself and Dr. Ramesh Sen or anybody else is not there, and you are the guys who are leading it. Remember Albert, I mean, this is plagiarism because Albert Einstein didn't write APO rules that I did. But Albert Einstein said, more than the past, I'm interested in the future, since that's where I in intend to spend the rest of my life. I hope you guys will be the future of the Indian Orthopedic Association and of the APOA. Thank you.